I know I'm already late to doing this review and there's probably a ton out there already, but let me give you my take on the Flex 2.5 gigabytes. So Ubiquiti released this last week and it's something that's been called for for a long time. A lot of people wanted the small, tiny 2.5 gigabit switch. Well, here we go. So let's take a look at what comes inside the box. We open it up and we're greeted with the 2.5 gigabit switch. Now, looking at the technical specs, this is a little bit bigger than the original Flex Mini, so it does have a bit more size to it, but nothing that you're really gonna notice. I mean, if you put them side by side, I don't think you're really gonna notice anything. Um, one thing I will say is the USB port is on the front this time. Some of the, some of the flexes tend to be on the back, uh, if I remember correctly. And if we have a look at the top right here, we have the five ports that are on here with a PoE in just there. So getting this adopted, we'll get that done in a second. Let's see what else comes inside the box. This has come from America. So for those that you're watching in the UK wondering why I have an American plug, well, this is the one that comes with it. And it has a USB-C if you don't have PoE capabilities to be able to power this up. Uh, is there anything else that comes in the box? Let's have a quick look. We have the standard instruction pack that comes with, and I think that's it. So, yep, really, really simple. I wasn't expecting too much in here with this, but um, yeah, that's, that's it. Let's get this powered up and let's take a look at what it can do. So a lot of people have called for the VLAN, so there's full VLAN capability on this and it does do rapid spanning tree as well. So you have that option within here. So let's take a look and let's have a look on the Unify console. Now you can see the switch right above me. It's a 2.5G that you can see there. And if we go ahead and click on it, we can go and click adopt. And just like every other device, you'll go ahead and adopt and it will then go and update. So we'll leave that for a few minutes, let that go off and update, and then we'll come back and have a look at the settings within it. So that's all updated now. We're running firmware version or the device version is 2.0.1. And you can see we have a two and a half gig link uplink that's going to the 24 port Pro Max. So we're gonna get the full utilization out of this. It's not connected to any other power. It is literally via an ethernet cable. So PoE in. Now, the first thing we will jump into is the port management. So this is where we were saying about the VLAN settings. So we can go here set this one as VLAN 1, for example, as the default, so we can go and do that. And if you wanna change the VLAN onto the next one, we need to allow, say for example, the CCTV VLAN, we can go and do that. And then port number three, it allows you to choose another network. So we have three different VLANs set across here, and you can either set them all the same or differently, depending if you choose. One thing I would say with this VLAN, if you restrict the port coming into the switch, you're not gonna get those VLANs, okay? So keep that one in mind. So make sure your tagged VLANs are there as well, allow them all through. Otherwise, if you're blocking certain VLANs off, you wouldn't expect that traffic to work within the switch. Then looking at the insights of the switch itself, you can see how we have all the other switches. You can see what's in use, what's not in use. Now, I don't have anything plugged in at the moment, but I will be plugging something in shortly, and then we can take a look at the usage of it. We then have the VLAN options where we can choose and see what's assigned to the ports. So tagged, blocked, or native. So we have the native VLAN on three of them and we have two separate tagged VLANs on another. So let's head back to the settings of the switch. And you can see down here, we have the information and the parent device details. We have the insights, the system stats. Out of box, the memory is about 75% and the CPU you can see is barely seven to 10% at the bottom down there. We go ahead and look at the settings finally, then we have the network override option if you wanna set that, static or DHCP configuration, uh, global switch settings, which just means it pulls it down from all the global settings, but you can see if you wanna override this, you can enable jumbo frames, flow control, or even uh, change between STP and RSTP. We also have the option for the priority of the switches. So depending on the hierarchy that you have set up, you can change the priority. And then we have all the existing stuff that you tend to see from other switches, which is copying the device configuration, manual firmware update, uh, locate, restart, and remove. Now, normally on the locate functionality, we have a nice big screen that flashes, but this one, I don't know if that's gonna focus in, there's a little blue light on here that's just flashing to show you that this is what the locator is doing at the moment. 
you'll now see that there's a desktop plugged in, um, which is actually a two and a half gig connection. So you can see 2.5 gig, the wired connection is great. And what we're gonna do is quickly go to the topology and have a look at how this is set up. So we have the Flex Mini down here, which has the device plugged into it. So we have the PC plugged into it at that point. And I have my Mac Studio, which is currently plugged into the Pro Max 24 port. So both of those are plugged into a fairly similar area. So they're quite close by. And I'm just gonna do a quick speed test on them. So let's run some throughput tests. So on the Mac Studio, I have the open speed test running. Um, the Mac is running at 10 gig into the 24 port switch. And we're going through the 24 port switch to the Flex to the device, which is running at two and a half gig. Now, I don't expect to see any degradation of speed. I'm expecting to see the full two and a half gigs. So let's just flick straight across to the Windows machine. And you'll see right here, if I press enter, and we'll let that speed test run. And there you go, as expected, uh, we're getting full throughput speed tests on this. So we're getting the full two and a half gig down. And again, once this is complete, I expect to see two and a half gig up as well. Don't expect to see any difference. And there we go, that's the upload speed. So two and a half gig, roughly what we're getting there. So you can see we're getting the full throughput of this as you would expect through the ports themselves. If there are any other further tests that you wanna see, let me know down in the comments and maybe I can put something together in a future video for this. I really hope you have found this video useful. The Flex Mini is small, it's tiny, it's useful. It's something that will be perfect to sit on my desk right there next to my Mac if I need to do so and plug in other devices that I need two and a half gig from. If for example, you're struggling with certain areas and you've only pulled a single cable, this is perfect for those scenarios as well. Even whether you're in an office and you're under, say for example, a receptionist desk and you need to add more computers, this is perfect because it gives you full control of all the VLANs. So you can even connect up telephones if you need to do so that don't require PoE and yeah, any other devices that you have in this area. And the two and a half gig is something that's definitely been called for. Anyway, let me know where you'll set yours up and if you've bought one already. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.